Coming up on Cronkite News, the tunnel fire near Flagstaff continues to rage on. We take a look at the efforts to keep it contained and where it stands. Plus, President Biden is taking action on Earth Day to restore parts of the National Environmental Policy Act. We have reaction from some local organizations. And later on Break It Down, why climate change has become a political issue. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Molly McBride. And I'm Atria Mineshni. Thank you for joining us. A fire outside of Flagstaff has burned 30 homes and a national monument. Conditions for the tunnel fire burning northeast of Flagstaff have worsened enough for Governor Ducey to declare a state of emergency. Cronkite News reporter Luke Vickery has an update on the status of the fire. Today's wind gusts have the potential to reach 50 miles an hour in northern Arizona, causing the fire 14 miles north of Flagstaff to increase in intensity. The tunnel fire began last Sunday. Initial firefighting efforts focused on protecting homes and property. Dry grass and pine are fueling the fire, which has burned over 21,000 acres as of this afternoon. Included in that area is Sunset C Crater Volcano National Monument which according to their Facebook page has burned in its entirety. Staff was able to evacuate safely and save important items from the visitor center. More than 750 homes have been evacuated. The U.S. Forest Service Type 1 Incident Management is working on the fire suppression efforts. A National Weather Service meteorologist and flagstaff shared his predictions at a community meeting earlier this week. The good news is temperatures will be cooler. Relative humidities will rise on Fridays. We're not going to have those critically low relative humidities on Friday. The bad news, the winds will be even stronger on Friday. We're looking at gusts perhaps up to 50 miles an hour on Friday. So the National Weather Service and Flagstaff actually already has some high wind advisories out for today. Like he was talking about, we're going to have really high winds east of where these fires are right now, towards Payson and towards Holbrook. Those are where the areas of significant winds are going to be. Now, as we look at this map right here, you can see these dark gray areas are the areas where fires actually been already burned. So these dark gray areas, 21,000 acres and counting right now. And then these white areas kind of surrounding that are where we can see where most of this smoke is going. And that as we have these winds push further northeast and these winds amplify up to 50 miles per hour, we could see these smoke going further and further. I'll be back later to give you more on details on the forecast. Now closer to the valley, an annual fire ban from the Phoenix Parks and Recreation Department will go into effect beginning May 1st. That's just over a week from now. The ban applies to mountain preserves and desert parks and prohibits the use of open wood and charcoal fires. They say you can use propane and gas grills, but only in designated picnic spots. The department would like to remind everyone that fireworks and smoking outside of enclosed vehicles are never allowed. The Maricopa County Parks and Rec Department is also enacting a similar fire ban. That, that one goes into effect May 1st. The Biden administration is restoring stricter environmental review of major infrastructure projects. Cronkite News reporter Liz Flores tells us what these projects are and how they can impact Arizona. The announcement implements new procedures for upcoming projects. Sandy Barr from the Sierra Club welcomes the measure. In reality, what it means is the government is going to have to do a better job of, of connecting with those communities, looking at the impacts, listening to, um, listening to the people. The federal regulations require rigorous environmental review of projects such as highways, pipelines, and oil wells, and those that may impact on climate change. For Republican Ken Smith, this measure will not benefit Arizona. Based on what Biden has done in the past and what he's trying to do now is just more federal regulations, a lot, of, a lot more bureaucracy, a lot more red tape. It's going to hurt business. It's going to hurt Arizonans. It's going to kill jobs. Alex Ross from Defend Our Future welcomes the measure but remains skeptical. Whenever it comes to anything with our government, it's always careful. To, it's always important to be cautious a little bit um, because an idea and its implementation are two very different things. Of the right? three basic elements of the National Environmental Policy Act, the first one aims to restore the requirement that federal agencies evaluate environmental impacts. 
The second one restores the full authority of agencies to work with communities to develop alternative approaches to minimize environmental and public health costs. The third one establishes new regulations for the environmental review standards that federal agencies should be meeting. In the meantime, Barr hopes this measure will help Arizonans. Communities of color continue to bear the brunt of um, uh, uh, societal pollution. And so we need, you know, we need to make sure that those um, communities have more of a voice. In Phoenix, Liz Flores, Cronkite News. Phase one takes effect in late May, and according to the White House Council on Environmental Quality, plans to move to phase two are expected later in the year. Three Republicans whose candidacy for office was challenged can be on the ballot. A judge dismissed a lawsuit claiming U.S. Representatives Andy Biggs and Paul Gosar, as well as State Rep Mark Fincham, should be kept off the ballot under the 14th Amendment. Private citizens with the group Free Speech for People brought the suit, alleging that the lawmakers participated in an insurrection. But a Maricopa County Superior Court judge rejected arguments that the law adopted after the Civil War could be used to disqualify the Arizona lawmakers. He said the Constitution does not allow a private citizen to sue under this clause. Lawyers for the lawmakers argued they had not been charged in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport is the first airport in the country to allow passengers to use new technology when passing through security. Passengers can use their driver's license in Apple Wallet to verify their identity. Today at a press conference, Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego announced the news, followed by a demonstration of how the scanning process works. She says she hopes the use of the mobile ID verification makes the security process easier and more enjoyable for airline passengers. We love that the airport is trying new things. We want to make this the best possible experience. We know airport security is not always the favorite part of the trip. So hopefully this makes a vacation or a business trip just a little bit more fun. Mayor Gallego said she does not have security concerns with the new technology. The verification process for the mobile ID system is extensive, including a facial scan. Plastic is found to be in the air, in our water, and even in our food. But now researchers have found plastic in the human bloodstream. Scientists at the Free University in Amsterdam analyzed blood samples from 22 healthy donors. Of those 22, 17 were found to have microplastics in their bloodstream. Half the blood samples showed traces of plastic widely used to make drink bottles and disposable food containers. This is the first time plastic has been found in blood and further research is needed to identify whether or not the particles are harmful to our health. Today is Earth Day around the world and here in Arizona, there are some places in which you can get closer to Mother Earth. Cronkite News reporter Juan Uresti tells us about an event where love and protection for Mother Earth is the main goal. Today, April 22nd, Air Day marks the anniversary of the birth of the modern environmental movement in 1970. Organizations here in the Valley continue their efforts to protect the environment and promote organic farming. This morning, Spaces of Opportunity held an event to kick off Air Day's celebration. Community members and volunteers planted vegetables and trees and enjoyed the day surrounded by nature. Bridget Perez from Project Roots says Earth Day is a perfect day to remember that Mother Earth is a living being and humans depend on it. Because we all live on it and it's, it's our first mother, it's our first care and just to bring recognition to it and to get back connected to it, make sure we're connecting to it if we're not. Um, and just grounding ourselves back in the earth and remembering all the wonderful things that she has to offer us and, and we have to offer her. At Spaces of Opportunity, people can have their own piece of land as well as volunteer to work on the field and spend time with nature. Spaces of Opportunity will have another event tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. They will have health booths, farmer markets, vendors, cooking demonstrations, poem reading, and music performance. In the newsroom, Juan Urresti, Cronkite News. I'm sure you've noticed the cooler temps. 
Well, those temperatures aren't here to stay, and we may even hit triple digits next week. Luke Vickery joins us from the Cronkite News Weather Center with more. Good evening, Arizona. Looking at future casts right now, you can see we just have a few storm cells up to the northeast. But what we're actually going to see pretty soon this weekend is this squall line of thunderstorms that are going to be in the Oklahoma to Dallas area. Classic areas, you see these strong thunderstorms during this time of year, but that will move east and move out towards the earlier parts of next week. But here in Arizona, here's what we're looking at right now. Low pressure centered over us right now. That's what's bringing us most of these breezy conditions we're feeling right now, along with our drop in temperatures and a little bit of a chance of precipitation up towards the higher terrain areas. But that's going to move out soon. We're actually going to have a high pressure build over us, and that's going to bring warmer temperatures on the way later next week. And that will move out. We'll have one more low pressure system make its way briefly through our area, but that will not be affecting us as much as the things we will see earlier this week. 75 degrees at 6 p.m. as we move on later into the evening. We're going to see 69 degrees at 10 p.m. with a little bit more cloud cover as well. 83 degrees is going to be our high temperature for tomorrow in Phoenix. If you move north towards Flagstaff, around 57 degrees. If you move south towards Tucson, you'll be looking at around 80 degrees. Looking at our eight-day forecast now, you will see that rise in temperatures come later and earlier into next week as well. Tuesday hitting 101, which is our highest chance of hitting our first 100-degree day next week. In the Cronkite News Weather Center, I'm Luke Vickery. I'm Hayden Weber. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. The NCAA might soon approve a new sport for the championship level, and the Sun Devils are pretty good at it. Stick around to find out more. What you get from Washington Week that you will not get anywhere else are the best and the brightest reporters from different media companies, and they're able to have a real conversation about things that are happening in Washington and around the country. But it's also a show about issues that are relevant to different communities. How do you think that as the moderator, I feel this deep responsibility to bring in those other perspectives so that people understand how power and politics impact their daily lives. Friday nights at 7 on Arizona PBS. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. And now, thanks to PBS Passport, you can travel with me and watch all 10 seasons of Rick Steves Europe and all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today and get your passport. Welcome back to Cronkite News. I'm Hayden Weber with your Friday Sports Report. The Phoenix Suns are slated to take the floor tonight in Game 3 against the New Orleans Pelicans, but without their all-star guard, Devin Booker. Cam Johnson is expected to start at shooting guard tonight in Booker's place. An MRI revealed that Booker suffered a grade 1 hamstring strain. He's been ruled unlikely for tonight's Game 3 and Sunday's Game 4, and the all-star could miss up to three weeks with the strain. Moving from one current NBA star to perhaps a future NBA star, U Arizona's Dale and Terry announced that he will enter the 2022 NBA draft while maintaining his college eligibility. The Phoenix native was a starter for the Wildcats in a pivotal part of their Sweet 16 run, averaging eight points per game during the season. Terry is now the third Wildcat from this year's squad to enter their name into the draft, following Christian Coloco and Benedict Matherin. Cardinals general manager Steve Kimes swiftly put the rumors of a Kyler Murray trade to rest. Kimes said there is no chance the Cardinals trade Murray when asked about ongoing contract negotiations. Zero chance. Every other player that's been a third-year quarterback has been done in the middle of the summer to late summer, and it's no different for us. The sport of women's college triathlon hit a landmark point in growth with the announcement of the 40th collegiate program. Cronkite News reporter Connor McGill looks into what this means for the five-time defending national champs out of Arizona State University. Women's triathlon became an NCAA emerging sport in 2014. A year later, ASU started its program. And in seven short years, the Sun Devils have dominated the sport 
winning five women's triathlon collegiate national titles. I'm not going to say we're in Alabama yet, but, you know, when people are like, man, I want to go to that school, you know, because of their program. And, you know, it's definitely a really nice bonus. And, you know, it also makes you feel like you're doing the right thing and doing a good job. Despite ASU success, triathlon has yet to become an NCAA championship sport, a distinction that requires at least 40 collegiate programs. In February, Cal Poly Humboldt brought it into fruition. Now that women's triathlon has proven sustainability at the varsity level, the Sun Devils are hoping it will get the NCAA stamp of approval. It's really fun because you see the progression and you're part of it. And I think like triathlon is honestly like the best sport you could ever have because you're practicing three sports in one. It's always challenging. There's always new things to focus on and it's a growing sport. ASU head coach Cliff English thinks the sport will reach championship status within 18 months, but with more programs means more competition for the Sun Devils, a challenge which they welcome. It's definitely really exciting, but we're also very much living in the moment because we're like, yeah, it's NCU sport. That means we have more competition coming in soon, so we need to make sure that we're still in shape and ready to defend our title. As they wait for the chance to play for an NCAA title, the Sun Devil squad is eager to be a part of the continued growth of the sport. In Tempe, Connor McGill, Concrete News. Coach Cliff English hopes within the next 18 months, triathlon will become a sanctioned NCAA championship sport. Now, while swimming, running, and biking does make for a great competition, two Arizona sisters, Ariana and Karina Danu, used biking as a way to honor those who have lost their lives due to the war in Ukraine. The two rode 26.5 miles each, totaling 53 miles to honor a 53-year-old Ukrainian bicyclist who was recently killed. We felt a connection with her when we heard her story because she was a fellow biker like us. We're doing this also to honor every Ukrainian mother out there who has died. That's it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Molly. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.